I think we were very fortunate uh, that uh, our whole activity started with uh, Vikram Sarabhai. And uh, he was a visionary who had the clear thought process of uh, how to really take this space program. And uh, his baseline was that whatever we do, this so-called advanced technologies must be utilized for the benefit of mankind and society. It's not that we go on building bigger rockets or compete with any other country. That was not the issue. So always he was telling. Namaskar, Dr. Suresh. Namaskar. Uh, meeting you after a long time, you know, personally, otherwise I talk to you almost uh, on a regular basis. And uh, it's a very different occasion. I have come, we have met for many, many years now. Yeah, that's true. And uh, we I have really enjoyed talking to you, working with you. In fact, uh, uh, I, it's almost uh, maybe past 10 years, I'm very, very closely associated with you. And uh, so uh, this conversation is all almost like, you know, I, I just, I have known you, I have read your books, I have known you for a very, very long time. Uh, I, I, and I know a little bit of you, your childhood, you, where you grew up, how you grew up, something of that kind, you know, yeah. uh, and uh, your varied interests. And uh, that really, I'm so, Fascinated by your very sometimes I wonder whether when you are talking about uh, in the book I have seen that uh, you have you were participating in a drama. Yeah, right. And uh, that was I did not know. And so it, it is really wonderful. And um, I don't know whether I read you are from Hos Huskere. Huskere, yes. Is, is the right word? It's a small village. Uh, in the town called Kopa in Chikmagalur district. Okay, okay. You you were you are from that village and you studied your initials. My study up to SSLC, those days up to 11th standard. Yes. It was all in Canada. Okay. <laughs> Canada okay, medium actually. Okay, okay. And then uh, then uh, uh, those days you did not have many schools in your native village and Absolutely all. Absolutely no school. No school. Up to fourth standard, it was only one school, one room, one teacher. <laughs> you know, four walls. Yes. And we were all sitting in that room and then learning all these things. Yes, really. yes, yes, yes. And then for, for your higher studies, secondary education and all that, you came to Bangalore or some other place? No, uh, I will tell you, up to primary school, it was very near to our village. We had to walk about uh, a kilometer and a half. Then, from then on, was the middle school and high school. It was in the town called Koppa. That was in the, there was no English medium those days. It was only a Kannada medium in that town. And it was about three to four kilometers. We used to walk every day from home, walk up to the school, come back. And both were in a town called Koppa. And after that, I moved to Shumaga, nearest town Shumaga. Okay. Uh, for my pre-degree okay. and I did that. Then, of course, I came to Bangalore. Then you came to Bangalore and after that, uh, your journey started in yes, yes. Uh, many places, mostly aerospace engineering. Correct? Basically, you know, uh, it was not really aerospace. Those days, we didn't know much. Yes, that is that what too, I was wondering. Yes. That too, coming from village, yes. we did not know anything about that. Even, for example, when I did my pre-degree, I didn't know that I can even join engineering. Yes. You know, that was a kind of ignorance. Yes. It was there. And uh, as everybody does, I joined uh, Bachelor of Science in Bangalore, one of the colleges, Vijaya College. Those days, it was the second best college in Bangalore after National College. Joined there and studied physics, chemistry, mathematics okay, as usual. Okay, okay. I think that's where I learned that one can really join engineering and Immediately after that, I joined the 
engineering course actually. Okay, okay. That's what happened. Your first degree is in uh, uh, those days you said aerospace engineering was not. No, it there. was uh, it was not aerospace. I did in mechanical engineering. Mechanical engineering. Okay. I did my is... engineering in mechanical. Yeah. Then you know I got admission at IIT Madras. Yes. Those days I was fascinated by this uh, machine tool manufacturing. Yes. Things like that. And I was very particular. I should study machine tool design. Yes. How to design various machines and all that. Yes. I joined there and completed that. And while I was in the final year, you know, one fine day we saw some ad in uh, Hindu, the Hindu paper. Yes. And uh, some of us who were in IIT Madras, uh, that was from Space Science and Technology Center okay, okay, at okay. Tiruvananthapuram. Yes. And uh, we had just heard some program is going on on space and. Uh, and uh, more than anything, we wanted to get a firm job. Yes. You know, those yes. days, getting <laughs> a government job yeah, was, yes, the, yes, yes. was the most fascinating thing. Yes. And we went there and uh, to our surprise, out of six people, only two of us got it. Okay. Myself and one of my close friends. We went and joined in July 1969. That's how our career started. Okay, okay. That was the first time. Really, I came to know there is something like aerospace yeah. and I can contribute in that. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. And uh, after that, uh, uh, after completing your aerospace and all, when did you join uh, this thing, uh, become survey? Actually, the Space Science and Technology Center itself later on named as a Vikram Sarabhai Space, Space Center. Okay. Uh, you yeah. know, when I joined, you might have heard uh, the church building, then Tumba, Equatorial Rocket Launching Station, they were all the early beginnings. I joined in July 1969 and uh, to everybody's surprise, I can tell you, one month I was sitting in the same church building where the whole activity which Dr. Kalam used to tell yes. you know, all the time, yes. how the religion and science amalgamated and took birth for space, that's how it happened. And of course, then onwards, our journey continued. Only one interesting thing was, Kalam was there and I was fortunate to work with him almost 16 to 17 years, shoulder to shoulder on many developments actually. Actually, I have seen your photographs with Dr. Kalam and incidentally Dr. Kalam was also our president at International Academy of Engineering, yes. which you also yes. became later. And uh, I have seen your photographs with many good people, you know, big people, I would say. Like Bikram Sarabhai, Dr. U. R. Rao, and one Dr. Kalam, Prime Minister, Present Prime Minister, and almost and uh, our uh, the uh, the C. N. R. Rao. You name it. You name it. Anybody. So many people. You know. You you are very. Sometimes I wonder. You know, because I have been sitting next to you in so many meetings. As you were President, I was Vice President of I. N. A. And I attended so many meetings with you. And uh, what fascinated me was the way you took decisions, you know. And uh, one, 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 one more thing was that, you know, particularly I can tell about myself. You wanted me to be the vice president. You wanted me to take care of youth conclave and youth activities. You wanted me to be the editor-in-chief of INA. But you, you wanted that and you just told me, Dr. Ghosh, I think you should take these responsibilities. And believe me, I was really fascinated. You never told me that how I'm going to run these offices, you know, whether I'm doing youth conclave, whether I'm doing editor in chief or whether I'm doing as a vice president. You, you gave me the responsibility and you, and you just said, if you have any problem, you let me know. And another thing was that if I have any problem, I will come to you and you will tell me this is a, a very straightforward, you know, and in many, many meetings, what I've seen is that you are sitting and when you are sitting as a president in a meeting and where 20, 30 people are sitting there, everybody has a point of view and point of view of persons of that stature, you know, they're all fellows of the academy. Everybody has a point of view, a very different True. and uh, sometimes on a one particular point you are stuck and uh, you are not stuck others are stuck and there were so many point of views and all that and uh, once we have talked about say for half an hour or so you said all right i have heard everybody and 
this is the way I have understood the whole problem. I have understood your point of view, and this is the way it should be done. And that fascinated me, and uh, th that uh, I found that, and this you know decision was acceptable to almost everyone. You know? There was no kind of clash or something. No, 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 no. Dr. Guru Suresh is not the right thing you are doing and all that. This fascinated me because why I'm asking all these things because I know you as a president of Indian National Academy of Engineering and I heard, I have heard so much about your institute, about ISRO and your institute, other institute where you are the, currently the chancellor. No, Indian Institute of Space Administration, which you, in fact, you started it and correct, almost correct. started it. And these are the backbones of ISRO, you know, all what we are hearing today. For example, uh, Chandrayaan 3 and almost everything. We are, these are the, if these institutions were not there, you know, I, I don't know, I don't know how many people from Indian Institute of Space Admission are there in ISRO. Because I find that there, I, I believe that there must be many. So what I want to know from you is that because ISRO is doing very well and I should not tell you anything about ISRO because you are backbone of ISRO and you have been working with ISRO for such a long time. What is what is the, the culture of ISRO? Because two things ISRO is you know, besides Chandrayaan 3, which is a very big thing. Two things are very much discussed. One is ISRO's culture, the scientific temperament and culture of ISRO people. And second thing was, how did they make the program at such a low cost? These are two things, you know, and there are many reasons. When I think of it as an administrator now, and uh, I thought that it would be, if I get some idea about that, how, how you want to really Go, how ISRO manages all these very difficult things. Because as you know, in our country, science administration is very, very difficult thing, you know. And uh, mostly people think that uh, it's, it's, it's simply not money. How to use that money is extremely, extremely important. You know, I would like to first start on the ISRO culture, what you mentioned. I think we were very fortunate uh, that uh, our whole activity started with uh, Vikram Sarabhai. And uh, he was a visionary who had the clear thought process of uh, how to really take this space program. And uh, his baseline was that whatever we do, this so-called advanced technologies must be utilized for the benefit of mankind and society. It's not that we go on building bigger rockets or compete with any other country. That was not the issue. So always he was telling. And in fact, unfortunately, he died at a very young age yeah, yeah. on 31st December 1971. And I was fortunate at least to have interaction for two and a half years two with and him. Half years, yeah. He used to come once in 40 days and encourage all youngsters. You know, He believed in having our own talent within the India. And he recruited all youngsters within the country who came out of our own universities, our own educational institutions. That's the best thing. And yes. uh, only one one thing he did was he went to US once, picked up about five or six leaders who are something like five to six years elder to us, mm. brought them and put them in different responsibility like propulsion, control and guidance, manufacturing, etc. So that is how we started. And that the, those days he called Space Science and Technology Center to trigger the technologies needed for building the rockets. That's how we started. And then after his death, again, we are very fortunate to have a person like Satish Dhawan, who at that time was yes. the uh, director of Indian Institute of Science and a visionary by himself. Yes. While Sarabhai encouraged uh, some kind of healthy competition and very fast development of various activities and all that, Sarabhai, his start, and the way in which the management structuring was done by Dhawan, I think these two are really great, great things. So that foundation he led at that time and continued. How the ISRO culture has come is both of them, they encourage youngsters. Both of them, they encourage the Indian talent. Third is, there, is, there was no hierarchy. You know, something like boss and subordinate. <laughs> yes. And they, the best thing. That's best the best thing, thing that yes. happened. And, you know, they brought the culture of 
any youngster who are joining today in a open discussions and meeting they can raise their finger and then ask a question or even tell sir what you are telling is not correct you know that kind of freedom was yes. there and that continued all through yes. actually that is one thing which made us really learn many things and second thing you asked you know decision making i think both we learned from particularly the satish dawan and subsequent to that professor you are out to core as the chairman of isro both of them they have this habit of listening to all view points synthesize and then finally take a decision is not related to me or you or anyone else related to the organization which decision makes the organization stronger and healthier you take that decision yes. i think everybody sitting around know that it is definitely decision is in the interest of the organization not in the interest of x or y or an individual itself i think that's where the difference comes and people accept that okay another thing uh, which uh, while talking to you comes to my mind because after uh, joining uh, becoming fellow of ina i met many people from isro and uh, i used to talk to them and uh, many people told me that when they were discussing about initiating a particular project they will not start with talking about money they will talk about what they are going to do and uh, money part comes much later you know but they never thought if they are going to do this thing and they will have a shortage of problem uh, uh, financial uh, problems so they told that no and the best two things i realized that one was the the projects were discussed when they were discussed they were discussed like in so much details and it is a very integrated thing you know many people are coming and joining the group and second thing was once it is suppose it is okayed by all the agencies and all that the review process the review process is so excellent that uh, as you rightly said when there is no hierarchy and all that everybody has a point of view sometimes what happens in organizations now i have worked in many good organizations as well as normal organizations and i find that many people don't want to say what they want to say you know sometimes they say if i am telling this thing my maybe i am hurting my boss and all that they said that is that was missing in uh, i and i i i what what i you have a first hand experience of the review process as well as when the pro, the project is going to be taken up by isro these are two very very important things in 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 the management of the whole thing you know naturally they say that the as far as science science part is concerned it is the highest form of science you know it is so precise so accurate and all that small man millisecond this uh, <laughs> difference makes all the problems in the in the system so what is you how because we are all indians <laughs> god doesn't make people from isro a very special kind you know we are all indians but when they go to isro they are they are i maybe i am talking too good too many good things about isro but that is what feeling i get you know that what is since you are involved with this thing for such a long time what is the man management thing and how you kind of because we are when we are born we are born with some kind of ego and all that and how how we have managed this thing you know the way in which uh, we are all molded is as i mentioned because of the the visionaries and stalwarts who brought this kind of culture that was one when it comes to the project what used to happen is as sarabhai said rightly we don't really come out with uh, some kind of projects which are which are not really going to help the country so the bottom line is you know for example remote sensing is required in remote sensing whether it's agriculture whether it is fishery or whether it is rural uh, uh, mapping or it is whether about the tele education or telecommunication or is a disaster management each one we sort of take the requirement then try to bring a project report that is number one second thing is as you said rightly it undergoes very very severe debate and discussions not only amongst ourselves you know this again i would say brought by professor satish dawan and subsequent leaders we bring fairly good number of specialists from academia 
R&D and industry. They are also part of that. So that, you know, what we call as the holistic view of the whole activity is taken into consideration. Yes, you are right. We don't really consider the cost right in the beginning because that comes later. If you start taking the cost and try to really bring everything under that, we may not end up with the right yes, uh, project, yes, exactly, the right exactly. uh, product really. So once these things are done, and at the same time the costing starts, and that also goes through very, very severe uh, scrutiny in terms of why do you require so much? Can we manage with this? You know, what we call frugal engineering. A lot of frugal engineering has, yes, gone, yes, has yes, gone into yes. that. Second thing, you know, being in space, you require very many advanced technologies, advanced instruments, advanced equipment, etc. But from the beginning, we have what is called buy or build options. So while we allow the buy, for example, you know, gyro accelerometer, we didn't have in the beginning. Mm. When Kalam started the project SLV3, we had to buy. We went to France and Sajim company, we bought fairly for a, another 15 launches and brought it. But we just didn't stop there. Further, what happened was we started developing our own uh, gyros, accelerometer, so that at some point of time, we stop the import, then we produce our own product. It happened with the engines, it happened with the materials, it happened with many other things. So, you know, you asked one question, how you are able to bring down the cost? This is one of the reasons, actually. And here, I would like to give credit to the Indian industries. They really shook hands with us. They also had that, uh, what is called national spirit to help the country apart from their own profit motive. I think this continued all the time and we were able to indigenize many things. In the process, Indian industries came and helped. Not only the public sector, private, big, small, all participated actually. In the process, we are able to really contain the cost. That is one aspect. Second aspect is, you know, all said and done, the manpower cost, human resource cost in India is considerably low. Yes. So that has helped. Yes. Second thing is, we have done the what you term as the risk management very efficiently. You know, for example, you may require producing something like a 10 hardware to really prove that system in terms of carrying out various tests and all that. But we have done it very judiciously, optimize the hardware, cut down the numbers. So, and in the same process, we are able to qualify and then prove the technology. And once it is done, we have flown and then succeeded. So this is the amalgamation of this kind of different approaches, which I think evolved over a period. It has helped us to really bring the good product. Then of course, involve others into the uh, whole review process. And any big project, it undergoes internal review. Then it goes a second review with the experts from academia, industry and all that. Third, it goes to the national level committee. We call it national committee. And after that, it the earlier days, it used to go to planning commission. Planning commission used to present then of course it will go to the government and go through that process. And invariably I would say that approval cycle is very smooth as far as ISRO is concerned. We never faced any major problem. No, you don't proceed because we have gone with so much of good homework and able to convince everyone and the whole nation is with us saying that you can go ahead and kill it. Yes. Actually today, this morning when I was coming here, somebody sent me a very small clip and it says, the world's two leading agencies are NASA and ISRO. NASA has lots of Indian scientists. ISRO has, doesn't have a single US scientist, but they are working independently. This gives a lot of credit to kind of yes. ISRO, you know, ISRO scientists. They are doing so well, you know. And uh, our contribution in NASA program is huge, huge, huge. I mean, because, I, because I know many people who are working for NASA program and all that and doing very well. Another thing which comes to my mind is that about ISRO, uh, general view is as if they have a very truncated view of the application of ISRO outcomes, you know. For example, they think only sending <laughs> the spacecraft to the moon is the only objective. You see, it is one of the objectives. Because ISRO, but when I look at it, you know, when, when I look at it, ISRO technology, what you are developing, uh, uh, for for this particular purpose is also helping you in many other ways, you know, is so wide. And uh, I think, uh, I'm sure maybe I don't know or maybe many people don't know. Maybe many people think 
that uh, i think more uh, education has to be is required or maybe I, i am not aware of that so much is happening in isro it is not only for chandrayaan 3 or next project and all that there are many offshoots of the technology which are very very useful for example uh, as you know that in, in your in your time you started this uh, your passenger craft for our country you know yeah yeah right, you know right. do you think that these two things can be connected initiatives now initiatives can be certainly connected you know ultimately we also strongly believe that uh, what is required for the country i think we have to promote we have to encourage and we have to see that it happens so why we started uh, regional transport air cup so vigorously because you know the the debate was going on with uh, various other stakeholders like hcl development agencies government uh, industry all that that was going on but i think having an academy like indian national academy of engineering they have no stake or they are not linked with anyone and our intention was how to really promote the various technologies needed for the country so we took it as an initiative and i think in that we have really succeeded because you know we did survey based on the inputs available elsewhere and uh, i must really recall the contributions made by rodam narsimha yes. he was one person who was behind that and we took his support and then pursued it further you see even now you look at the way the orders which have gone from indigo and air india all something like a 500 500 aircraft and in fact the countries like us and europe they are celebrating because they got so much of order and so much of employment generation so much improvement economy not only countries economy so that's why we have pursued and we are happy to say that it has made good progress i think it is around the corner they would possibly uh, will set up the what is called special purpose vehicle and we strongly believe you know sometime or other it has to happen for a country like ours and government also is looking very actively to have a collaboration with one of the major companies and now this make in india is coming in a big way whether they can attract them and try to start you know that will generate lot of employment then it will help the industries to come forward and we can export things the requirement is very large all these things will happen actually actually what why why i am asking you this question was because i was i think someone i think the chairman isro was telling there are huge number of startups more than in hundreds which have come up because of this isro initiative and the private investment which has gone into it uh, as you rightly say that you have totally uh, dependent on them also that not totally but you are dependent on them that the material they are producing for the, for your purpose you know is quite satisfactory you know so big investments are also going taking place in private investment stock table not only government is the stakeholder but private industry is coming in a very big way and startups very new persons many new persons who are in different areas they are joining hands and giving it a boost so do you think this i think is a very very that is a, one of the objectives of uh, i would in a limited view i am saying that indian national academy of engineering that is one of the things that promotion of engineering yeah, as a profession correct, no correct. that is the whole idea of indian national academy of engineering i think success stories you have one or two success stories that change, makes so many changes you know and uh, i think if you look at it you know so much is you no know, when i was coming i was thinking i don't know what i'm going to talk to you i am not a i am a biotechnologist i am a chemical engineer <laughs> and i know nothing about chandrayaan 3 and all that i know that what others know but the moment chandrayaan landed in you know in in the uh, on the on the moon the first thing i i did was i wrote a poetry good <laughs> first i wrote it in hindi uh-huh. then i translated it in english okay and suddenly i felt very kind of um, so very confident i can talk to dr suresh about anything about chandra this is the kind of confidence you know right. i'm just at my age if i get this kind of confidence <laughs> which is maybe that is not required at my age when i'm thinking of a 
boy who is 20 years old or 25 years old and he's going into this profession do you think that that is going to make a big change and they will think my question is to you is that if you have anything specific to say because in your time you were a mechanical engineer still in in this time also there are many mechanical engineers there are many electrical engineers there are many remote sensing people there are many computer science people Everybody is required, many chemical engineers, everybody is required, you know, for everything, you know. And, uh, and then they can go to this thing. And now you have specialized institutions as, as you are the chancellor of one of the such, such institutions. If, and now I think you are in this education also. You were earlier an R&D man. Now you are in education also for a long time. If you have any specific message for uh, ask youngsters who are going to join the profession as a, you know, kind of a space as a space scientist, particularly. What are the opportunities and all that? What will make them think that yes, I am taking the right track? You know. Okay, Professor Bosch, you have asked uh, one or two important questions. I will split it into two. One, you asked uh, ISRO is not doing only Chandrayaan two. You know, we are doing all these so-called interplanetary missions. It's only a very, very small percentage of our exactly. entire work. In fact, we always work a lot on space applications, which really touches the common man in terms of remote sensing, in terms of communication, in terms of navigation, in terms of disaster management, so on and so forth. In fact, that was the dictum given by Vikram S. Sarabhai when we started the space program. So what we have done is, in fact, we have really structured our activities by developing the spacecraft, so-called thematic spacecraft. You know, the land and earth, then the cartography, then the education. Like this, we have number of satellites which are all specifically designed to meet this kind of application program. Once you do that, you also develop what is termed as the payloads applicable to that. It could be a camera, it could be a spectrometer, it could be some other instrument, all of them you build and then come out with the design of a spacecraft to meet the end goals. Now with that, I want to tell you that I think today we have various applications. For example, agriculture. In the agriculture, we have the soil monitoring, the soil fertility, the weather monitoring, then of course the fisheries, you know, where exactly the fishermen can go and do that. So that in each of the areas in remote sensing, in communications, in navigation, I think, you know, I have compiled as a, a Satish Dhawan professor, which you gave as the yes, yes. one of the requirement. You know, I took upon myself to compile the space application, which has been done over a period, as many as 31 applications we have put in that, which reaches out. What happened is um, when Honorable Prime Minister took over uh, at the center, the first thing he did was because he had experience at Ahmedabad as Chief Minister of Gujarat to utilize the space for the uh, common purposes. So he organized a huge meeting at uh, uh, Vijnanabhavan by inviting as many as 70 different ministries and told them, look, the ISRO is generating so much of data in various things. I think we must utilize and use it in the national development. In fact, when he came and addressed uh, Chandrayaan 3, just three days back, yes. he touched upon this idea. Mm. Space should not only do these things, they must really touch the various development which will help the common man, which will help the nation to develop further. Yes. I think that was one of the major objectives. And today, I think as many as more than 120, 130 such projects are going on, doing small, big, which in a way helps the government, including Today, you know, space is contributing so much for the governance of the country. So that is one part, actually. So these things are going on and that's how we are able to launch so many satellites. And I want to tell you today, <clears throat> we have as many as 57 active satellites in space from this Indian continent, which is serving all these things. And in a lighter vein, I used to tell always, today, directly or indirectly, if you look at it, the space has touched every single person of 1.4 billion population directly or indirectly. Okay, yes. That is the kind of uh, yes, yes. Uh, touch that uh, reach it has uh, 
achieved actually mm-hmm. now coming to the next question that you have asked that education yes you know youngsters should know how they can contribute today i think those who are getting trained in there are so many institution today they are touching aerospace earlier it was aeronautics but they all most of them convert into aerospace because space segment also has come into that today they sort of teach on this remote sensing communication the flight dynamics and many other areas more than that how to work as a team bring system engineering how you are able to put them together and make it still a success you know when we really launch for example chandrayaan 3 it is not the work of any small group or big group it is i think whole the isro participates in somewhere other they all big different center all uh, engineers scientists supporting staff they become part of that it is something like a we do it you know mm-hmm. that kind of feeling each one in isro we have and many times i want to add it is not just scientist and engineer i think even their family members they become yes, part exactly. of that yeah. very very important very, very important very and important, you, know, you know it is also told that whenever we have a launch and launch it it is not that we scientist engineer sit in the control center and pray and the entire family pray about yes, it actually yes, yes, yes. you know that's why the education today i think we are trying to attract as many youngsters as possible tell them that this is important one thing i want to tell you is once you develop this kind of cutting edge technology at one end of the spectrum they can do anything else in the country they need not necessarily work for isro they can take up any other job but they will excel oh, okay okay no and one thing which is also a related question is that once upon a time you had only us and russia they were two players now there are many players in this field naturally india is one of the leading players now there is a big competition naturally this is going to happen because now one of the idea is that everyone wants to become a player you know in this world you know not everybody has the kind of technology and all that they will take, take technologies from different places like us also from india also this is a very competitive market you know and uh, in this competitive scenario uh there are many players who are there in this thing for a very very long time particularly russia and us now we are also there but we are not also ran now we are we are running in the mainstream you know we are running along with them you know how tough is the competition and means competition is one thing and preparedness to face competition is another thing and uh, i think what is your view about that you know it's, it's a good question because uh, you know from the beginning our approach is that we always carried out various tasks project activities which are really relevant to the country you know we are not there to really bring any kind of competition or win over others that was not the intention that was not intention is that we have to really fulfill the aspirations and ambitions of the countrymen that is what is important one may ask that how what way for example chandrayaan or mangalayaan or these things will help i think in our opinion it is important that we also undertake some kind of very cutting edge technology and difficult uh, task and then prove to the country we are second to none that but at the same time you will you would observe the cost that we have spent is very very small you know for example 316 crore we have sent for chandrayaan 3 it is really compared to the national gross product it's very very small percentage yes. but today we are able to sort of sit in a table almost shoulder to shoulder with equal responsibility so people will treat us you know always uh, kalam used to tell respect the strength respects strength yes so. yes the strength respects strength <laughs> you you may look that you can, you cannot fight but you have the spirit of spirit of fight. fighting and yes. appearance yes. yes so and so is very good so you know that brings some good. kind of confidence yes, in people yes, like yes. really exactly and um, i think um, uh, 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 as you rightly said that ki success brings you know, for example i was watching a serial aspirations <laughs> it's aspirations for some very different purpose 
but here aspirations come from success you know if you want to become come to this area for example I, today I, yesterday i met a girl who is just um, 12 years old and uh, she was telling that she wants to go into ocean development and all that i said how come at such a young age you are thinking of ocean development and all that oh, sir actually um, when you see this kind of things chandrayaan and all that so people are thinking that there are many avenues which are untouched for example ocean development is one area where lots of possibilities are there particularly i can tell you about biotechnology you now people are telling new antibiotic sources are available in deep in the ocean you know but what worry uh, i'm i'm wonder i'm wondering that girl of 12 years old or 13 years old and think like she, who thinks like that and that is progress that is progress and that progress. that makes you think that yes we can do it we can right. do it and right. that is and that is very very important and these things you know such stories you know for example we have stories from isro we have stories from atomic energy we have stories you know in some pockets you know it we are doing very well and still there is no end to these successes you know there are so many things to do and we can think of as you rightly said remote sensing and then um, your um, uh, communication envir- commun- uh, environment Envi- engineering, environmental engineering and all so many other things are there which will which will sometimes you you once sometimes many pe- students ask me not students who are aspiring students is there any future beyond it no i said yes there is a big future beyond it no there is a big future beyond it and beyond iit <laughs> correct 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 the, you know what i mean i raise this issue in many platforms because i particularly feel that there are many issues which need lot of consideration for our end and we are capable of doing that and these are the success stories which because actually Uh, there are many stories now coming up in the on the internet and all other places you know from where these people have come correct <laughs> when i look at isro for from where they have come they have come from small places you know yeah yeah all from very small places very small places and they are doing so well correct it's, it's a, as a teacher i i always i am i was a very ordinary student I, I got I fortunately I got education from a very good institute but I feel that there's a lot of potential you know and these potentials we have to tap and there are many avenues and these success stories you know people like you we can if we present them before the common man you, know, you are the real heroes now as someone said that real heroes are our scientists you know I personally believe I recently wrote a book in Hindi and uh, this book is about uh, there i say that science has much wider implications not only mathematical modeling and so many other things you know but it has much wider implications which can go very deep into society and all that we need science is for everyone yes you yes, need is. not be a scientist but science is for everyone actually your science your aerospace engineering is for everyone it is not only to send people to the moon it has much wider implications it is going to make a much better world that is what i think uh, is my view and definitely i have learned many things from you sitting next to you and uh, for many years <laughs> and uh, you have been very kind that you have shared many of your views with me i think uh, <clears throat> we have to stop somewhere you with your last words uh, for whatever you want to say to our youngsters who really <clears throat> now before that uh, you know what you said is right that uh, there are very many areas unexplored in india which are all uh, to be contributed as a part of science and technology and uh, you rightly touched deep sea exploration it's one of the very prominent areas it's as difficult as space while we really move yes. up in space we send people to the 
uh, certain heights and all that then you know their health their other things which are all there while you go deep into the sea also to, to the depth of 5000 meter 6000 meter it's much more difficult than sometimes even send uh, sending a person to at such a high high at such hydrostatic high pressure, pressure you know hydrostatic pressure and yeah. all that i am very happy that government has taken note of that and today they have sanctioned something like up to 6000 crores deep sea exploration is going on manned submersible you know fortunately some of us because of our experience they are involving us in some of these projects and i am really uh, having links with the activities that yes, are going exactly. on and as you rightly pointed out lots of resources that are available in the sea bed actually so that is one area once you take it up so what i would like to tell to our youngsters is don't just get locked down to what has been done or what is likely to happen i think there are many such unexplored areas which are required for the country how do we really look at it you know one is the deep sea exploration second is what is called as the environmental studies that are required third is actually you know the way in which things are happening the weather fluctuation and the global warming all these areas i think we need deeper study and then look at it if we don't give our attention to these kind of specialized areas i'm afraid the future mm-hmm. generation will suffer maybe the second uh, future generation or maybe third future generation the way in which the weather vagaries are happening rain is not coming in proper time food is not available i think we have to look at it in a much broader perspective and then try to look at it and for all this i can tell you for sure it is you said rightly science is the only solution but science coupled with technology is going to really make a big big uh, forward movement in the country you know just one example before i close is the the space and electronics started around same time way back in the early 60s but the thrust and then attention given in space has brought us where we are but then for some reason i don't know why but the thrust given for electronics was not the same order or same level and now we are opening and then we are looking at it yes. you know say the your fabrication technology then the chips that are required in the country we are all suffering and i am sure there are many many such areas where we need attention and the students who are interested and the younger generation who are interested in the advancements of science they must look at it widen their horizons spread their thinking and try to see that how we come really one of the strong nations and position by 2047 as a developed country this is my, this was going to be my last question where do you see our country in next 10 15 years and you have rightly said you have your optimism says that we are going to be really really um a, a, a science nation you what you call you know we will have a very strong base science base and uh, i think i think our country has a very bright future i think with these words i but thank you i am so happy that we, you could make it i could come to jay bangalore and uh, i'm sure i will get all the support and initiative from your end and uh, thank you very much sir thank one, you thank one you one last thing i would like to add if i may basically you know it's not just science i think in india we have tremendous capability in terms of youngsters education all that but what possibly we can achieve is i think the similar handshaking by the administration and governance yes. so governance and administration also should think rightly that we have the capability and the support is there i i don't say it is not there but i think that component has to increase and funding in terms of science and technology has to increase like many other countries you know to the level of something like 3 to 4% today it is admissibly something like 0.7 0.8% i think that is also equally important and we can do it we can afford to do it and it generates lot more revenues to the country actually yes thank you very much and another one thing i will add here the reviewing process reviewing process so, you yes. know the money you give and after that so the reviewing process you are following in isro should be followed in our Other all areas. scientific and diverse good okay. thank yes. you sir thank, thank you thank you thank, thank you, you very much thank you thank you very much